Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Sunday morning worship. Um, if you're thinking, can I bear a Valentine's Day service, please don't panic. Um, however you choose to celebrate uh, that as a day at home or don't choose to celebrate it, uh, it's not the focus of our day today. We're not, we're not all about pink hearts and flowers today. Um, but thinking about, about love and community and loss um, and looking at, at the reading 1 Corinthians 13, um, uh, which Lily is going to be reflecting on for us. Ooh. Okay, I've got a weird echo because I think I'm playing this video on Facebook as well at the same time, so I need to sort that out. Okay. Ah, too many different screens that I'm trying to juggle. Don't like it. <laughs> So we're going to, um, I'm afraid we, we've got a slightly different order of service this morning. Um, I don't think you've, you've got that, but don't worry, let the, let the service work over you. And um, we will in a moment have a hymn, which if it works streaming it from YouTube, you'll have the, video, the words for. So. We gather this morning as individuals and as a collective each of us loved by God for who we are and transformed into community by the love of the Holy Spirit, the love that holds us together even when we are apart. And so I invite you now to light a candle to symbolize the light of our lives together in the love of God, a relationship that is always new and in which we are renewed, the flames of our hearts drawn together as one, in the dynamic community of the Trinity. Let each of us reflect on the hopes that lie in this eternal moment. God of love and loss and knowing. We place our lives in your hands for your cherishing. We invite you to call us into deeper life and deeper love and into the future. We commit ourselves to hold this life and love tenderly, to be held and known by you received into your hands and into each other's hearts with awe, wonder and joy. We belong to you and to each other in mutual love and freedom. Amen. We're gathered here as human beings who know that we all fail and as people who believe that to come together and to affirm that forgiveness is possible is a powerful and creative gift for each other. I invite you to say after me, no matter what has been done or not done, we are not separated from love. Love is never destroyed by the failures in our lives. We come to celebrate that grace is always possible among us. May the God of love bring you back, forgive and free you, heal and strengthen you and raise you to new life through Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Amen. In Christ, everything is born anew within the womb of eternity. May love be the seed of this new life shared with all. With thanks for the gift of love and each other and hope for the dawning light, we give ourselves into your hands, one God, now and forever. Amen.
And so our reading today is taken from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 13. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but, new, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror, in an enigma, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. Thanks be to God. So may I speak in the name of the living God. Amen. So, as we know, today is the 14th of February. And this is a date that I'm sure means only one thing to all of us. That's right. It's the lesser festival of Cyril and Methodius, 9th century missionaries to the Slavs. But, of course, whilst the ministry and lives of Cyril and Methodius may well be indeed of great significance to the church and the faith, February the 14th is one of those rare dates on which a saint's named feast day is marked by the culture at large. Although the fact that the church doesn't actually really celebrate St. Valentine at all, certainly not the Anglican church, might have something to do with both the pagan roots of the original feast and the commercial nature of its contemporary manifestation. Indeed, whilst there is ambiguity as to whether there were in fact two third century Roman Christian martyrs, one a priest, one a bishop, named Valentine, or whether they were in fact one and the same person, there is definitely nothing remotely romantic in the sketchy accounts of Valentine's ministry and martyrdom. Moreover, no lesser authority than the Oxford Dictionary of Saints, for it is that book, asserts that the association between the Feast of St. Valentine and romance and romantic love might be to do with the folklore that birds are meant to pair up on the 14th of February and or that the Roman fertility festival of Lupercalia happened around the middle of this month. But whatever the case, the fact is that 14th of February is for us synonymous with love or at least with a particular idea of love that we might call romantic love. 
However, it is also arguably synonymous with a highly commercialised, commoditized, reductionist idea of love. Love as a product that is packaged and sold back to us. Shrinkflation love, in which the meaningful content is incrementally removed, whilst the price incrementally rises. Now, whilst that may sound overly cynical, I think it's fair to say that people have mixed experiences of the kind of romantic love celebrated on St. Valentine's Day. From painful memories of damaged or damaging relationships, to memories of loss, to feelings of loneliness and pain, to feelings of indifference. And perhaps that's something to do with the complexities of human relationships and with the complex nature of love itself. Because we know from experience that love is more than an annual festival. But in truth, it's difficult to know what we mean when we talk about love because it's something that seems to strain at the boundaries of language and expression, something that is felt emotionally rather than comprehended intellectually. Nevertheless, love, in all its inexpressible complexity, seems to be fundamental to our experience of life and to who we are. And it seems that Paul thought this as well. Um, now, I, I chose this reading today um, partly because it's, it's a reading that um, is quite famously uh, used at wedding services often, although I, Christine and I didn't have it at ours, actually. Um, but also because, actually, uh, this letter by Paul is going to be the focus of our um, morning prayer Bible readings throughout Lent uh, and it's a it's a fascinating deep sometimes troubling complex and complicated letter um, but one of the great themes in it is love and the complexity of love but also the kind of fundamental nature of love and Paul asserts in our readings from uh, our reading from 1 Corinthians 13 that without love we are effectively nothing that love is somehow funda the fundamental content of existence Paul also has a go at trying to describe love listing some things that love isn't envious boastful arrogant rude selfish, irritable, resentful, bad, and also listing some of the things that love is. Patient, kind, joyful, true, forbearing, believing, hopeful, enduring. Now, I must admit that when I hear these two lists, I tend to feel like I am all of the things in the first list, but that I'd like to be all of the things in the second list. And I imagine that I'm not alone in feeling like this. But thankfully, this is not the whole story, because as Paul suggests, these negative things, those things in the first list, the things of the world that we think define us, are not, in fact, definitive at all. They are not the things that make us who we truly are. The things of the world are not the things, ultimately, that matter. Love is. And love never ends. So says Paul. And what I think he means is that love is infinite. And it, it, is, it is within this infinite love that the fundamental content of our identity will be found. Love is God. 
and the relationship into which God in Jesus is calling all of us. So, whilst we may be tempted to domesticate love in things like Valentine's Day, like we try to domesticate God through things like religion, ultimately, love is not something that we own or control. It's not something that can be packaged, commodified, reduced and sold back to us. Love is the gift and grace of God. Love is something in which we all share and which we are all called to share. It is community. It is compassion. It is vulnerability. It is relationship with each other and with God. Relationship into which we are being called and through which we are being transformed. But we are not there yet. This is journey, not destination. And here even Paul strains at the limits of what language can express, what human understanding can bear. For now we see in a mirror, in an enigma, en enigmati. But then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. God sees us. God regards us. God knows us. And God is with us, loves us. And we are called to see others, to regard those around us, to know them to love them, to share in the love in which we all share. We might not truly and completely know what love is, but love knows what we are. And if it is perhaps only when we know we are loved that we ourselves can begin to love, in Jesus, we experience the ultimate expression of God's love. The love which frees us to love and to be loved. And through which love, God is calling us into eternal life, into the kingdom. Calling us to be truly in love. In the name of the living and the loving God. Amen. Thank you. Now, uh, bear with me, everybody. I have been uh, struggling with my computer throughout <laughs> um, in the hope that this is going to work. It seems to be going very slow today. So I'm going to attempt to share with you some Martin Luther Field singers um, from um, Songs of Praise a while ago, singing My Song is Love Unknown. But bear with me if it doesn't work.
just about, I think, it struggles with, the, with YouTube. So an affirmation of our faith. Oh, hang on. YouTube moved on to playing something else now. Let me just turn that off or you might get some strange person in the background. <laughs> Let us give voice to our convictions and substance to our hopes. We live by faith in the love of God embodied in Jesus Christ. We live in hope which does not disappoint but brings love to life. We live in the power of the Spirit, transforming our lives and the whole of creation. Amen. So be it. And so we come to our time of prayer and intercession. Um, so I'm just going to change my screen so that I can see your comments. Um, do please add your prayers into the comments as we go and um, I'm going to light some candles here for um, some of our headings of prayer and I'm going to begin by lighting a candle for all the many relationships that we're suffering the loss of this year whether that's people we know who have died or people, friends that we've not been able to see, um, church members we haven't been able to meet, a candle for the people that we miss. God, we pray for all those that we love and are really missing seeing at the moment. We pray for those we've loved and lost, whether this year or many years past, but still miss. We pray for all those networks of relationships, our churches, our choirs, our football teams, our clubs, people that we know well, people that we only nod at in passing, who all make up the network of relationships and love and community that we're missing so much at the moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And a light a candle for all those who are in any kind of need today. Our prayers have been asked this morning for Janet, who's normally with us, um, but has a, a distressing meeting this morning um, and has asked for our prayers. And for anyone in any kind of need today, in, in body, mind or spirit, in any kind of sorrow, illness or trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church. As we remember Cyril and Methodius, we thank God for all those who have spent their lives sharing their faith, learning new languages, so that they can have proper dialogue with people in different countries and cultures. We pray for the mission agencies today, struggling with the reality of their colonial past and of how all their good intentions about sharing their faith were 
inextricably intertwined with colonialism and oppression. We pray for the racism uh, and even white supremacy that is still endemic in our society and in many places in our churches. We play, pray for your healing and your clarity and for love to truly prevail. And we pray for our own church community here, all those people who are missing so much meeting in person, all those people who are unable to connect online or simply don't find this um, a way that helps them pray. I light a candle for the church, past, present and future. We're going to light um, two more candles. Firstly, one for everybody who can't stand Valentine's Day. <laughs> for people, um, as Kath mentions, who are asexual or aromantic, who find Valentine's Day very difficult, very uncomfortable. For those who mourn the loss of a life partner, all those who are single and don't wish to be, and for those who are very happily single and are fed up with people asking about relationships. We light this candle for all who find Valentine's Day a particularly difficult time. And a final candle for all our concerns around the world, for the people of Myanmar, for all those still captured and held by rebel forces in Nigeria, for the people, the Ogyar people, um, in internment camps and forced labour in China, for all those in refugee camps around the world, sometimes for decades now. We pray for all those places in the world where there is trouble or distress and pray for peace. the people of Yemen, the people who've been affected by the abuse claims around the evangelist Rabbi Zacharias, people who have been suffering at the hands of abusers, grandparents separated from grandchildren, parents we've not seen, Paul and Ali moving away, Lauren, who's lost her nanny and her baby. And people celebrating too, Rose's brother-in-law, 50 today. We hold all those mentioned in our prayers, O oh God, before you. And pray for your light, your peace, your joy and your liberation to prevail. 
those in your mercy hear our prayer. So it seems a long time since we've shared the piece. I mean, even it probably is about a year, isn't it? I think it was about this time last year that we um, said, maybe we'll just stay a bit separate and not shake hands. So a whole year of not physically sharing a piece together. Uh, but nevertheless, as we can um, in this space, we remember that Jesus can transcend time and space. Remembering that the risen Christ, when he came and stood among his disciples, appeared in a locked room where they were sheltered and said, peace be with you. The peace of the risen Christ be always with you. And so we come to the preparation of the table. I have bread and wine ready here. Bread, homemade by Phil. Wine delivered by the key workers from Asda. We gather as God's people in our different places around this table of our communion. We bring bread knowing our need to be fed and aware that many are hungry. We bring wine knowing our need for joy and aware that many are lonely. We bring ourselves, trusting that you will take and share our time, our talents and our treasures and make them enough. Amen. God of all creation, we give you thanks for the story of your love and faithfulness. You recall your people again and again by your unpopular prophets to the vision of radical justice that you set before us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that sustains all things, inspiring us with dreams for the future and inflaming us with passion for your world. We thank you for the embodiment of your justice and love in your incarnate word, Jesus Christ. The crowds came out to see this Jesus, yet at the end they turned on him as those in power sought to destroy his challenge. On the night Jesus was betrayed, a circle of friendship and learning gathered around a table to celebrate the freedom of your people. Jesus blessed you for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, this is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it, and said, this is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And so with these fragile things, this bread and this cup, we celebrate the strangeness of the cross and resurrection. We hold together the mystery of dying and living of sacrifice and empowerment, of communion and community. Send your spirit on us now, that we may feed by grace on Christ, with opened eyes and hearts on fire. In communion with the whole company of saints, with all who gather, and have gathered and will gather around other tables throughout time and across the world. We offer ourselves to live for you, 
anticipating with joy and gladness the feast at your table in heaven, which will have no end, where we will see you face to face and know your embrace, overcoming all our distances. Amen. We'll join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. I'm going to use the traditional language version today, partly because you haven't got an order of service in front of you and it may be the one you know best. But if you have another one to hand um, or know another one better, then please do use that. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So I'm going to take and eat this bread and wine now and share it with my family here. Um, if you prefer, you can simply be praying while that happens, uh, making an act of spiritual communion. If you have something to eat or drink at home, then I invite you to take it now as a sign of our communion together. And I'm just getting slightly distracted. I'm hoping I might be able to play a piece of music, which Louis wanted me to play at this point. Um, but my computer is being very slow. So I think that's probably not going to happen. So we'll just have a moment of silence and share our communion. May we who have shared in the reality of our communion without being physically present to one another, know the reality of God's presence with us always. May we who are living in this time of brokenness and separation, know God's wholeness in our hearts and our communities. May we who hunger for a time when we may be together again, Feed a world hungry for love and justice. Amen. So may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, in the light of Jesus Christ and the power of the Spirit, and the blessing of God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit be with you and rest upon you now and always. Amen. And if you've joined us for a while, you will probably know our closing affirmation off by heart. So do join with me in saying it now. In the circle of God's love, we are one. The circle is never broken. In the light of God's welcome, we are one. The light never goes out. 
Let children teach us the wisdom of play. Let neighbours teach us the gentleness of care. May the circle surround us when we are apart. May the light draw us together again. Amen. So let's bring Louis back on your screen as we say goodbye to you. I've just got a few notices um, and Louis can unmute himself if he has notices to add. Um, obviously this coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. Um, if I didn't know that already, I would know it because Zoe leapt into my study um, halfway through a Zoom meeting last week saying, have we got the things for pancakes, mum? <laughs> Um, we'll be keeping Ash Wednesday in our morning prayer service. Uh, we, we're doing, if you don't know already, we're doing morning prayer each weekday, Monday to Friday at 9.15 here on, um, on our Facebook page. And so we'll be keeping Ash Wednesday in that um, this coming Wednesday. And we're starting, as Louis said, a new series. During, in morning prayer this year, we've been reading through whole books of the Bible. It's been absolutely brilliant um, and discussing them in the comments. Uh, if you haven't joined us in the past, perhaps you might like to consider trying just for Lent, um, maybe even just one day a week for Lent, but if you can come for the whole of Lent then you would read through 1 Corinthians, which is the book that we're starting on Ash Wednesday. And so I invite you to consider seeing if you'd like to make that a spiritual discipline um, this Lent. On the other hand, um, I don't want people to feel that there's lots of things that you need to do for Lent. I think we're all simply trying to cope at the moment. So Please don't feel that any of the things on offer are, are obligations. They're, they're simply there offered for you to join in with if you would find it helpful. Um, and there are two Lent courses, both on Zoom. Uh, I know not everybody gets on with Zoom or finds it easy to access, um, or what we can do at the moment. Um, and for some people, it makes it more accessible. So swings and roundabout. But there are two Lent courses um, at the moment. I'm sure you've come across them, but if not, they're both listed on our website with details of how to join. Open Tables, um, Jerry Proctor is running a Lent course based on the book Saying Yes to God. Uh, oh, got the book there? Is that what you're doing? Oh. Um, on Monday evenings, and um, Laura Ferguson and Richard Popperwell are running an art workshop based course on Thursday evenings. Um, if you'd like to go to the latter, then you do need to um, be in touch with Laura, vicar at salukinacity.org.uk. Um, because there's kind of, um, you need to be on a mailing list to get the artistic prompts and so on. Um, but you can look at the details of both of those on our website. And our next in our series of public theology lectures is um, on Monday the 22nd of February, that's Savvy Hensman, who's one of the Open Table trustees, speaking on church, LGBTQ, LGBT equality and the priesthood of all believers. Um, you need to sign up for that on Eventbrite, but it's a free lecture, so just search for it on Eventbrite or click the link in your email. If you're on um, our mailing list, I don't mean our emailing list, I mean if we actually physically have your address, which I, I know we don't for everybody, but um, then you will be getting a letter in the next few days, um, which has got a little pack or with an activity for each Sunday through Lent. Don't worry if you haven't got that, um, it's probably too late to give us your address now, I'm afraid, because we've, we've sent out all the stuff that we bought, um, we bought the right amount for the number. But um, you'll be able to still join in uh, with things that you find at home, and we will we'll talk through that each, um, each Sunday. But it might be that you'd like to begin thinking about finding maybe a box or a or a shelf in your house, there might be a spare mantelpiece or a spare bit of bookshelf or something, um, which you could dedicate to building up a journey through Lent. Um, and we'll be focusing on that each Sunday through Lent. So um, maybe begin to have a little think about a space that would, that would be a good place for that. Um, we'll have after church coffee on our usual link um, after, the, after the service. Um, and if you'd like to go and get yourself a cup of tea or coffee and come on to Zoom and have a chat with people, then please do that. And if not, we will see you again either on Monday or next Sunday. Bye, everyone. Bye.